everybody, welcome back to my channel, Blue Lady Couture. Today I thought I would have a go at sewing on my treadle sewing machine because believe it or not, I've never actually tried sewing on it while it's set up as a treadle. So yeah, I thought that would make a really interesting video because you know, how hard can it be? But maybe it is quite hard, I've no idea. So I thought I would film the process and yeah, see what happens. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago we had a kind of a good tidy of the living room and we've rearranged a lot of the furniture which meant that uh, my lovely sewing cabinet which was originally in the opposite corner of the room was kind of tucked up out of the way and it didn't really get looked at or seen but now it's over here it's kind of in crowded place in the middle of the room and I was tidying up and giving it a good clean and a polish and I found out some interesting little bits of history about it which I'm going to briefly tell you about now but I don't want to get too bogged down in the histrionics of, of sewing machines and, and things like that because obviously you're here just to see me attempt <laughs> to sew on it um, but the actual machine itself uh, is a family heirloom it belonged to my granddad's stepmum um, and it was passed on to uh, my nanny and she has now passed it on to me and it's one of my most treasured possessions that actually I love ha having it. I've always admired it when I was a, a child. My nan used to have it um, out from time to time. Um, and yeah, and then it came to me. So I'm really, really privileged to be able to own it. Um, I've checked the serial number date on it and the, the date, because it's, it's a singer, and so you can go and check these details online. There's a wonderful database um, to, to look up the serial numbers on singer machines so you can find out how old a machine is. And the date on this one is 1923. So it's almost a hundred years old, which is, yeah, that's, wow, I love it. When I first inherited it, it came in a, a portable base with a, a wooden cover on it and, and I have used it. It does work and it works pretty well. It's been out with me to reenactment events. I have taken it on trade show events for the business uh, and um, and I've even been known to use it when we have power cuts so it's never been in a treadle as far as I know uh, but it does have the mechanism to set it into a treadle machine. So the the treadle believe it or not is actually inside uh, this cabinet um, and these are known as drawing room or parlour cabinets and this is a singer number 31 I believe which dates it again to the 1920s and yeah it's just instead of having the traditional kind of treadle tables that we're perhaps all familiar with with the the open uh, ironwork legs and the open actual sort of treadle pedal it's all neatly hidden away inside this cabinet and when the machine is dropped down inside as well it just looks like a sideboard in the, the corner of your living room uh, so that's obviously you know why they were designed to, to hide the machine away a little bit more um, but they're so so pretty and yeah, they've got all this lovely wooden details on there's little ooh, drawers all hidden away in here uh, and then I say the, the treadle is hidden in the middle here or the pedal rather and the treadle function is in this cupboard. I hadn't really seen them before and we came across it when we were out at an antique centre a few years ago and I just I fell in love with it and had to have it and yeah it came home with us. Um, when we got it home and we were kind of digging around in the drawers we actually found the original um, uh, this little booklet which is the original hire purchase contract from when the machine was bought, rented, uh, from a shop in Lincoln. Yeah, it's dated to 1924 and uh, that, so that means that the cabinet is only a year newer than uh, the machine and I'm just, it makes me so happy that the I've got the right machine in the right cabinet and yeah, it just, silly little things like that makes me, makes me happy, makes me smile. So uh, yeah, I just adore being able to have this on display in, in my house. So this has all the info uh, written in it by hand, obviously written at the time of the, the shop where the sewing machine uh, was bought from in, in Lincoln. 
the name of the, the person who, who rented it, who took the contract out, which was a Mr. Thomas Root. Uh, and as I say, that was dated in 1924. Um, it has the serial number of the original machine, which they obviously had in this cabinet, um, which has obviously just, just, just disappeared over time. Price of the machine and the cabinet at the time was £10 and 10 shillings. And inside the book are all the little receipts of when they've made payments uh, towards it. Obviously, it's a higher purchase, so eventually they they they, they paid the money off and and owned it eventually. Um, but they were paying things like ten shillings at a time. And the last date stamp in here is uh, May the third, nineteen twenty six. So from. 6th of October 1924 to May the 3rd 1926, so nearly eight, 18 months it took them to, to pay for the machine and the cabinet in full. That is absolutely fascinating. But I digress, you're not here to hear me ramble on about histories of, of sewing machines, you want to see me actually try and sew with this, but I think I need to be dressed slightly more aesthetically for a Sunday afternoon sewing in the 20s, so let's sort that out now shall we? Twenties, not twenty twenties. Let's try again. That's a bit better. Right. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how to fill up a traditional machine because it's very different to my, my current modern machine. Um, uh, yeah. Now I have used this before um but i've not used it for a long long time so you'll have to bear with me <laughs> she says hmm. <laughs> trying to remember machines you thread the needle that's assuming the needle's in the right place has it been that long since I've used it it goes sideways This is how spoiled I am because my modern machine has an auto needle threader on it. <laughs> this is the first time I've had to thread a proper needle for ages. Regrets already. Oh, how stupid idea is this? Oh, is that supposed to go that way? I have no idea. I don't want it to roll though. I don't want the needle in the thing. I think I'm supposed to be holding my foot on it. Does that stop it? Maybe. That might help. Right. Okay, we have a bobbin thread. We have an upper thread. Get that under. I don't know why I'm so scared. <laughs> right, we have a piece of cotton. 
fabric. So let's see how. <laughs> Come on, you can do this. It's just a sewing machine. You've used these for years. Just because you've got to do something weird with your feet. Ah! As soon as I take my foot off, it drops the needle. Is that right? Okay. Right, now I think you're supposed to start like the machine off by. Why is it going backwards? Is it supposed to go backwards? I don't understand. Uh, right, okay, I don't think I'm getting a full motion, so it's kind of basically rocking backwards and forwards at the moment. Right, okay. Let's try this again. Oh, no, that doesn't... But of course, it's not going to be very happy with that because I've rocked it backwards and forwards, so it's now going to get stuck underneath on the bobbin thread again. So, I mean, I've no idea what the actual tension is going to be like on this at the moment. I might need to fiddle with that. I just want to kind of get it going. Right, we'll try again. Maybe I need to be a bit more forceful and just start it going. But then it just feels weird. This needs to be like. Maybe I should try without the fabric and just see if I can get the motion going. Because this isn't happening, but yeah. It's getting. Yeah, I don't think the tension's right on it. We're gonna need. Oh, yeah. Hmm. This isn't going well. I don't want to unthread the needle because then I've got to thread the needle again. <sighs> Come on, alright, you need to practice this. You can't just. Clearly, you can't just put a piece of fabric under it and away you go, and it's not that simple. Okay, that seems to be working. I'm rocking my foot, it's going. Why can't I do that with fabric? Why? <laughs> running the fabric through it without a thread in it again as well just to because I have do have a feeling this needle may be rather blunt and we have to see if I can find unless the needle is in it the wrong way around I can't remember it's been so long since I've used this machine So that's probably not helping with the whole sewing mechanism. Let's see. Right. Let's try threading the needle again. Mm -hmm. Stay up. 
That's really annoying. <laughs> Well, that's a bit easier. Maybe it was just a very old shonky needle. Right, okay. Oh, that's what I was, oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna just test the needle, wasn't I, before doing it with the thread, but okay, never mind. We've threaded the needle, so we're just going for it. We are just going to Attempt to try sewing again. Right. So working it's doing more or less what it's supposed to do but the tension is really not happy on it at the moment This is really loose, so I think we need to tighten that spring up on there to tighten the tension. Try that. Yeah, that's definitely better. Not 
perfect. Right. I don't even know what. I'm gonna shorten the stitch length, which I think is this one here. where you want it to sit. Not very precise, but you know, I think it does the job. Let's see if I can get it in one motion. Here we go. That's a lot shorter stitching. The weird things. You're so used to with like modern plastic machines, you're so frightened you're gonna break something if you push on it too hard. Whereas, I don't know, I'm winding this the right way around. Whereas you have this, because it's all metal and it's all mechanical, it can take a serious amount of stick. I don't know if I'm winding that right, but we shall. Ow. Oh no. Try not to trap fingers. Right. That's not winding. Why is that not winding? Um, what have I not done right? <laughs> Remember, how does this machine work? Yeah, you can 
precision is, and I guess it like anything, it just takes practice. But yeah, getting it to stop like at a precise point, especially if you want to pivot or anything like that. I think the tension is quite one hundred percent on here. It's and then you lose a stitch. Stay. hope you found that fun and interesting. It was certainly fun to have a go at. As I said at the beginning of this video, I've never tried sewing on a treadle machine before, so I didn't know how well or how easy it would work, how quickly I would pick it up. Um, yeah, I definitely need to refine my technique a little bit, uh, and I do need to tweak with the tension just a little bit more on that machine as well. It's not quite 100% perfect. Do let me know down in the comments if you have a treadle machine, if you're sewing on a treadle machine, if you've got any great memories of you know, treadle machine sewing. If you like this video, please do click the little thumbs up icon uh, just down below. And you can also subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to know when my next videos go out. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. The links for that will be down below, as will be the link to my coffee account if you'd like to spend a pound or two just to help support my channel by buying me a coffee. It helps me keep on producing content here. In the meantime, I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye. Three, two, one. That, no, that's really shit, sorry. So yeah, it, this could be kind of funny, weird. Oh God, I'm just gonna... <laughs>